Hello and welcome to another episode of London's Fashion Alphabet. I'm Lucy Whitmore, I'm fashion creator at the Museum of London and today U is for uniforms. Today I'm going to be telling you about a really fascinating group of uh, women's uniforms from the First World War period and I'm also going to be talking a little bit about the influence that uniforms had on women's fashion during the First World War. Um, so to start, I want to introduce you to this really interesting group. Um, these uniforms were collected by the first keeper of the London Museum, which was the uh, predecessor to the Museum of London, a man called Guy Francis Laking. And during the First World War, um, Laking started preparing a war gallery for the Museum of London that would um, include a variety of objects representing what was going on during the war. And he was really forward thinking in his collecting and he wrote to lots of different companies across London asking for examples of the uniforms that were being worn by women. So Laking wrote to these different companies saying that he was putting this gallery together and he was really anxious that it would be as representative as possible. And um, this was actually quite a progressive way of thinking because women's war work wasn't typically valued in that same way. So we're really lucky that he had this foresight and this group of uniforms is actually incredibly rare. Not many examples of, uh, survive in museums elsewhere. So why were women wearing uniforms? Well, with um, a large portion of the male population being conscripted or volunteering to fight, there are a lot of roles that needed to be filled and there were lots of women available to do so. So they weren't roles that were typically um, undertaken by women and this was quite a big moment um, for women moving into the public workforce. This included um, military roles, and these were really auxiliary or supporting military roles, supporting um, Britain's armed forces. Um, and around 100,000 women um, took on auxiliary military roles between 1914 and 1918. Um, but there were also lots of civilian jobs vacated by men. And these included things like um, transport work, um, driving trains, cleaning trains, um, train porters, um, cleaning roles, police, post office, all kinds of different jobs. And it's these civilian roles that are more represented in the collection that we have here. To give you an example, this very heavy um, coat, which is uh, not unlike a soldier's great coat, was worn by a female conductor um, of the steam bus, which was a steam powered bus that ran um, in London for a short period of time, around 10 years. And this uniform here was worn by a female window cleaner for the Mayfair Cleaning Company. Um, and what's really interesting about this particular garment is that it was worn with trousers. So the tunic would hit about mid-calf um, and the trousers were worn underneath. And this was um, a really big moment. It wasn't common at this time to see women wearing trousers in public. Um, and it really did cause quite a scandal. So while some women were really pleased because the practical physical work they were carrying out really did require practical clothing, um, some women objected and actually protested about wearing trousers. And um, there was a lot of public discourse about this and a lot of men writing to newspapers to complain about the travesty of seeing women in trousers. It's difficult to comprehend today just how significant this moment was for women seeing other women wearing these kinds of uniforms in public on the streets of London that showed their skill and their capability and their involvement in the war effort. Um, but this didn't go unnoticed at the time and um, these kinds of uniforms and the women that were taking on this kind of work were discussed at length in women's magazines. Um, in The Bystander in September 1915, it was said, you simply have to have them. Uniforms worn by women who are making munitions or driving taxis or clipping tickets on railways or working as postmen are so becoming that everyone wants to have one too. And the uniforms worn, both military and civilian, really did have a big influence on women's fashion, um, which is something that I'll come back to in a moment. But it's interesting to note that the similarities between civilian dress and um, civilian uniforms and military uniforms is quite um, quite uncanny. They really do look very, very similar. And there's one um, photograph in the Imperial War Museum collection that shows new recruits to the Wrens, the Women's Royal Naval Service, um, undergoing a squad drill outside Crystal Palace. And when you look closely, you realise that some of the women are in their 
own clothes. They're fashionable everyday clothes and some are in their uniforms, but it's actually quite hard to tell the difference. That is all because of a garment called the tailor-made. And the two uniforms hanging behind me here are both really typical of this style. It was sort of modeled on a men's jacket, on an officer's jacket, and it shares a lot of likenesses as well. Um, the officer style pockets that you can see here, um, the strong shoulders, um, the wide collar, button details, belts, this is all um, akin to military uniforms and it really shows the kind of practical purpose of this type of clothing. So this garment here is actually not a uniform. Uh, this is um, a civilian dress, a fashionable dress, um, that was, it was actually made by a tailor in Darlington called Bins, but it's very like um, popular styles that would have been seen all over London and made by tailors and department stores across the country. And as you can see, it's very similar in silhouette to the uniforms behind me. Um, and this is really the most ubiquitous style of the day. The tailor-made was something worn by all different kinds of women of all different kinds of classes for work, for leisure. So what's particularly interesting about this is it really shows the influence of the military style of uniforms on women's fashion, um, something that was really prevalent, um, particularly in the earlier years of the war. Um, so as you can see here, there are these folded um, tabbed braids, folded sort of into arrows that run down the front of the jacket on the sleeves and on the skirt as well. And this style is most likely emulating a specific um, military uniform. The same kind of braid can be seen on the tabbed frock coats worn by the various infantry regiments of the foot guards, which were part of the household cavalry. And if you look closely at the uniform worn by Prince Harry at his wedding in the last few years, you may see a very similar style, so it's still in use today. So while these specific military references in uh, fashionable dress were very popular for the first couple of years of the war, as the reality of what this war was like as it unraveled became clear, the references to the military became a bit less romantic and a little bit more practical. And that's really when the influence of uniforms such as these, of women undergoing everyday war work, became particularly powerful and significant. Um, and their influence on women's style is just evident when you look at any um, examples of fashion from the war era. Thank you so much for joining us for another episode of London's Fashion Alphabet. We will be back next week with the letter V.